Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio, and today I'm going to share with you how to recreate Nicolas Crystal subscribe call to action in DaVinci Resolve. So let's check it out. All right, so if you don't know, Nicolas Crystal is a YouTuber and I just really like his title. They have like a levitating effect to it. And so today I'm going to show you how to recreate this subscribe and turn on notification title from his video. So we are in DaVinci Resolve right now. We're going to bring a new Fusion composition in the timeline and then we're going to be able to move over to Fusion. We're going to start by dragging here a background and we're going to reduce the alpha channel down to zero, then linking the output of that background to the media out. Now we're going to need an icon, a bell icon. To do that, I would recommend to go to flaticon.com and here you can get a PNG file of the icon. Once you have the icon, you can just take it and drag it here in your working area. And then here I'm going to hit shift space on my keyboard and search for S rectangle. And then we're going to hit shift space again and I'm going to search for S render. Then I'm going to link the output of my media in to the S render. And then I'm going to link the output of that merge to the background. So now we have the icon, the rectangle. I use shape here instead of mask because if I go to S rectangle right here, I can link the width and the height with an expression by right clicking on the width click expression, then linking the width and the height together. So when I adjust the height, we're keeping a perfect square and not a rectangle. So here I'm just going to reduce the size a little bit like that. Perfect. And we're going to change the color here of our rectangle to yellow since that's what Nicholas is using. To do that, I'm just going to pull up one of his video and I'm going to use a color picker extension to select here the color that he's using. So in that case, it's going to be this color code right there. I'm going to just copy it. There's a lot of color picker extension for Chrome, Safari, etc. So I'll let you search for those if that's something you're interested in. Coming back to the S rectangle here, I'm going to just go to color. And then here in the X color code, we're just going to paste the color that we just selected. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to select my merge tool, each shift space on my keyboard, search for a transform node, bring that in, and then we're going to just adjust here the size. So I'm going to adjust the size and put that to the side right there. So we have some space here to add the text. So now let's bring a text node. I'm going to link the output of that text to my merge tool to bring it in the composition. Here, we're going to just select the text. In the text box, we're going to write subscribe. For the font, I'm going to switch to Popin. It's a free font from Google Font, so you can download that on Google Font. Here, I'm just going to move my text a little bit. I'm going to go over to shading, and here in shading, I'm going to select element 2, and here we're going to enable that. And in appearances, we're going to switch from outline to border fill. And now if we extend also horizontally, we have a perfect box that's going to be adapted to the text. So here, if I were to just write anything, as you can see, the box is just adjusting accordingly. Another thing that I want to do is here adjusting the H anchor so the text stay aligned properly. So here I'm going to just click H anchor left. So now when I'm going to make some modification to the text, it's going to stay anchored to the left and the layout of our title is not going to be messed up. So here, let's change the color from white to black. Then let's go back to shading and here we're going to switch the color from red to yellow. So we're going to use the same yellow color code that we use for the bell. Here we're going to make some space for the second text. I'm going to increase a tiny bit the size of this text. Let's just increase that by a bit. Align it. Let's just copy the text, paste it and link the output of that text to the merge. Bring the position down a little bit. So we're going to select again the same color and then going back to shading. And here we're going to switch the color from yellow to black. Let's change the text for turn on notification. And we should be good. Now let's make some adjustment in terms of position. So we have everything fitting properly into frame. So I'm going to go to my first transform, reduce the size considerably, move it over there. Then we're going to do the same here with the text. I'm going to reduce it to 0.06, then align it, maybe 0.065 actually. Same here with text 2, we're going to reduce the size to 0.065 and we're going to align it the same way. All right, perfect. We got the layout of our title. Now we're going to do the animation and the shake effect to give it that levitating feel. So I'm going to make some space here and we're going to add the shake node. So I'm going to select my transform, hit shift space on my keyboard and here we're going to search for shake and make sure that you select this shake right here, not the one with the abbreviation right there, uh, because this one gets just more parameter that we can play with. Bring that in, 
And now if I play it, as you can see, it's a bit too strong. That's not what we want. We're going to just reduce some parameters. So here at the pan and amplitude, I'm going to go with 0.05. We're going to do the same here with the tilt, 0.05. And same thing here with the rotation, 0.05. This is just what I think looks good, but please feel free to adjust those to get the result that you want, uh, to get something that is stronger or that is more subtle. Perfect, I think I'm happy with this. So now I'm just gonna select my camera shake. I'm gonna copy it, then select text one, paste it, select text two, paste it. And I've played, we got one issue is that everything is moving the same way. It's kind of if we were to apply the shake effect at the end of the composition. That's not what we want. We want each of them to move independently. To do that, we're gonna adjust here the phase and the random seed. So here, random seed, I'm gonna go at maybe five and I'm gonna adjust the phase to zero. 0.8 and I'm gonna select the other shake effect and here I'm gonna adjust the random seed to maybe 3 and the phase at 0.7. Right now the pan amplitude is a bit too much, it's moving too much on the left and right in my opinion. So for the text I'm gonna adjust the pan amplitude to 0.3 and 0.3 again. Here we go, I'm pretty happy with this. If that's too much for you, you can then adjust here the motion scale. So if I wanted to reduce that, I could go with 0 0.8 or 0 0.7, and it will just decrease a bit the movement. So here, 0 0.8, and same with the last one, 0 0.8. It's just decreasing the motion scale and having the title a bit more subtle. Here, as you can see, if I were to bring the motion scale down to zero, we will have basically no movement on the icon. So that's not what we want, but you can play around with this to get something that is a bit more discreet or that is stronger. So now that we get the levitation effect, we can move on to the animation in and the animation out. So the animation is going to be an opacity and a position animation. So I'm going to select my node, make a bit of space right here. And here I'm going to just select my camera shake, each shift space on my keyboard. And we're going to search for transform and I'm going to bring a new transform in. I'm then going to go to frame eight and here I'm going to drop a keyframe on center. Then I'm gonna go to frame four and I'm gonna move that again. And basically we're gonna make some sort of tiny spiral and then frame zero and we're gonna drop the last point right there. Now if we play it, as you can see, it doesn't look that good because we have a straight line. So we're gonna select all the point that we've placed and here we're gonna hit shift S on our keyboard and it's just gonna smooth out all those points and we're gonna have a proper spiral. So now it looks way better. Also, we're gonna switch from linear to smooth curve. So I'm gonna go to spline and here I'm gonna just select transform, click here uh, to fit, and then I'm gonna select all my point, hit S on my keyboard, then hit T to bring the ease in and ease out, and then 85 here in the ease in. Now if we play it, that's way better in my opinion. We're then going to do an opacity animation, so I'm going to select my transform, each shift space on the keyboard, search for a brightest node, and then here we're going to select the alpha channel. We're going to go at frame 4, drop a keyframe here on the gain at 1, then go to frame 0 and bring the gain down to 0. Now in Nicolas' title, the shake is also way stronger for the animation in and animation out, so we're going to do that right here. I'm going to go at frame 8. At frame 8, we're going to drop a keyframe here on the pan amplitude, the tilt amplitude, the rotation, and we're gonna go to frame zero and here we're gonna switch all of them to 0 0.15. Also, if you have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, I will recommend to add some motion blur. If you have the free version, that will not be available. But if you have the studio version, just select here the brightness, it shift space on your keyboard, search for motion. And here we're just gonna bring the motion blur. Now let's repeat the same process for the two texts, but just with an offset of two frame. So there is a tiny bit of delay. So here I'm going to select my camera shake, hit shift space, search for brightness uh, node again. I'm going to select the alpha channel, go to frame 6, drop a keyframe on the gain at 1, then go down to frame 2 and bring the gain down to 0. We're then just going to select and copy that brightness and contrast node, select the camera shake, paste it right there. Now I'm going to go back to my brightness and contrast, hit shift space and then search for transform. And here we're going to do the position animation again. Why I'm not just simply uh, copy and pasting. First off, because I need to have an offset, so it shouldn't be the exact same keyframe. And also because I don't want the position to be exactly the same. So it feels like it's individual animation for each of the boxes. So here I'm going to go at frame 10. I'm going to drop a keyframe on the center. Then I'm going to go to frame 8 and I'm going to adjust that position the same way we've done before as a spiral. So here frame 6. frame 4 
and frame 2. I'm making this spiral a tiny bit smaller because I think it will look better to have different scale. So then I'm selecting all my point, it shift S on my keyboard to smooth out that curve. Then going to the spline editor, and selecting the camera shake, and selecting the transform 2, and selecting the brightness, the second brightness, and here the third brightness, just keeping basically the transform 3. I'm then gonna select my brightness and contrast for the second text, it shift space on my keyboard, search for transform node again, and we're gonna do the exact same thing right there. Going to frame 10, dropping a keyframe on the position, then frame 8, moving the position, frame 6, same, and again making a small spiral for this one. Select all my point, it shift S on my keyboard to smooth out that curve again. And then here in my spline, I have my transform 3. I'm gonna unselect here my brightness and I have my transform 4. I'm gonna click here to zoom to fit, select all the point here, it S on the keyboard, and then here we're gonna switch the ease in to 85. And I'm just gonna copy my motion blur, select my transform 3, paste the motion blur, select my transform 4, paste the motion blur, and here you go, that's what it looks so far. Now let's just do the animation out. So for the animation out, you can just do the same principle. Here, select your transform, go towards the end of your composition. So here, for example, we're gonna do it maybe on 10 frames. So I'm gonna go at frame 109. I'm gonna drop a keyframe here on the center position, move few frames forward, and then adjust here the position a bit. Again, moving a few frames forward. And then I'm gonna go completely at the end and I'm gonna remove the box from the frame. I'm gonna select the point once more. It shift S on the keyboard to smooth that once more. Let's just repeat the process for the two other texts. So here on transform three and transform four. Again, I'm gonna have two frame delay. So here I'm gonna drop a keyframe on frame 111, then move forward. Select all the point, shift S once more. And we're gonna repeat that one last time on the transform four. Select all the points, shift S, and now let's just go to the spline, zoom to fit. We're gonna select all the points that we placed, hit S on the keyboard, then ease out at 85. And now we're done, let's just add one last node by hitting shift space on our keyboard, bringing a transform node. And now we can just adjust the position and the size of our titles. So here I'm gonna decrease the size a little bit, and then I'm just gonna move it to become a lower third down there in the left corner. And now that we're done, one last thing will be to add some drop down shadow. So here I'm just gonna select all the nodes. I'm gonna just lift that up. And here I'm gonna select my motion blur, each shift space on the keyboard, search for shadow. And here we're gonna just bring the drop shadow in. I'm gonna increase the shadow strength just to see what I'm doing. And here I think I'm gonna reduce the drop distance like that and adjust the shadow strength to 0.7. I'm happy with that. Now I can just copy the drop shadow, select the second motion blur, paste it, third motion blur, paste it, and here we go, we got our title. Whew, and that's it. That was a bit of a long tutorial to do. Uh, please let me know if you're still interested in those kind of video where I take a bit more time to just deconstruct how to do a title, you know, like tutorial that take 15, 20, 30, 40 minutes maybe. Uh, if that's the kind of video that you're interested in, I'll be happy to make them because sometimes it can be hard to try to do those videos within five minutes or 10 minutes because there is just too much stuff to do and to explain and there is some repetition and I really want to show you each step of the way. So yeah, let me know if you're interested in those thank you very much for watching and see you on the next one bye speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website including titles transition and templates but only for davinci resolve get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com